It's Confident Computing number 825. What's the difference between check disk slash F and check disk slash R? Hi everyone, Leo Notenboom here for askleo.com with another edition of Confident Computing, my weekly newsletter. The featured article this week is in fact about check disk. One of the things that I think confuses a lot of people when it comes to check disk is that uh, it has both a fix and a repair option. Now you and I might consider those to be synonyms, to be the same thing. If you're gonna fix something, you're gonna repair it. Microsoft and check disk specifically, think of it ever so slightly differently. They are two very different things. They have two very different uses. And the article, what's the difference between check disk slash F and check disk slash R actually throws in a new metaphor about fixing and repairing a book. Anyway, have a look. Also this week, how to avoid ransomware. There are three things that hopefully you're already doing. If you do those, you are in fact protecting yourself from ransomware. Can I delete the setup files I've downloaded? They tend to accumulate if you don't do anything with them. Do you still need them? Well, the answer is not really, but naturally there's a but. Uh, there is something you might want to do before you delete those setup files. Ever see the message, do you want to scan and fix? If you get this message when you insert a removable drive, well, that's back to our old friend check disk. It really wants to run check disk on that drive. There's a reason that message comes up and once again, there probably is something you want to do before you let Scan and Fix do its thing. A few interesting things on YouTube this week. Um, in addition to videos for the articles that I just mentioned, I also have videos on Stop Spreading Manure, the rise of misinformation, and how so many of us aren't just being exposed to it, we're actually the cause. How do I find someone's email address? It seems like such a simple thing, especially for those of us who are used to the days gone by of having phone books where you could find somebody's phone number relatively easy. When it comes to email addresses, that's most definitely not true. Common sense. We recommend it all the time. But do we ever explain exactly what it is we mean by that? Well, of course not. I try in just what is common sense. And finally, on YouTube this week, I have something that's a little different. It's a YouTube only video. I haven't written an article for this one yet. And if I do, it'll probably go to my personal blog. It's basically about the most important lesson I learned during my 18 year career at Microsoft. It's probably not what you think. It's a different style of video. I actually had a few days out of the office this week and decided to sit down outside and just sort of record myself. I'm interested in your feedback. I'm interested to find out if this is the st a style of video that's at all interesting to you, if the topic is interesting to you, and if you'd like me to talk about more of the various topics that I certainly have available to me, both from Microsoft and technology in general. Since this is currently YouTube only, visit that YouTube video and let me know in a comment below the video if you're interested in seeing more. Now, this week, the newsletter doesn't have an advertisement in it. In lieu of that, I'm actually going to introduce you to a friend of mine, David Lawrence. David's a, he's a Hollywood actor. He lives down there. Um, he's actually been in a TV show or two that you might recognize. But more interestingly, he's a technologist and he is now a voiceover acting teacher. So here's the deal. David's launched a free online class to introduce you to and teach you much of voiceover acting. Now, when you think of voiceover, you may go immediately to something like audiobooks, which is certainly a big market for voiceover talent, but it also includes many, many other things. In fact, much of what I'm doing right now as I record this video leverages many of the tips and tricks and techniques that David has shared with me and that David is making available in this free course. I strongly recommend that you, if it, this is at all of interest to you, that you go ahead and check out the free course. We're all in the situation right now where we're stuck working from home, 
hopefully we're working. And some of us are looking for potentially what I'll call a second career or maybe a what comes next kind of a thing. Voiceover is one of those things that you can do from home and can be really, really fun. I'm here to tell you, I do this kind of stuff. I mean, the stuff that I've learned with podcasts and videos and so forth all fall into this bucket and it can be an awful lot of fun to do. Now, I will share that I am an affiliate and David does, after the free course, offer a paid course that takes you into the depths, into the details, takes you to building a career out of voiceover acting. Obviously, it's not for everybody, but the free course will absolutely take you through what it means and what you can find out about whether or not voiceover is right for you. Like I said, it applies to much more than voiceover work. Much of what I do, many of the skills, tools, and techniques that I've learned from David and from his courses are things that I apply every day. Not just for Ask Leo, but even for things as simple as those ubiquitous Zoom and other online meetings and phone calls. It can make you sound better, it can make you look better, it can give you a better presence online. Anyway, check out the free course and see where it takes you. That's about it for this week in Confident Computing. I hope you find some of what I've shared interesting and useful. Until next week, I'm Leo Notenboom, and this is AskLeo.com.